Today we're talking about my most anticipated lens of 2020, the Laowa 7.5 T2.1. So let's do this. What's up YouTube? I hope you all are doing well. Today we are talking about the Laowa 7.5 T2.1. When I was getting into the Micro Four Thirds system, this lens really appealed to me because I really like wide angle filmmaking. It creates a really unique shot, but with Micro Four Thirds, it's a little bit harder to accomplish and it's a little bit harder to find lenses that aren't fisheye that are this wide. And that's one thing that really excites me about this lens. So with that, going into some of the details about this lens, this is a rectilinear lens. The oversimplified explanation around rectilinear is you're gonna have a wide angle shot without a ton of distortion. The other detail about this lens, it is a micro four thirds lens. Currently, they only offer this lens in a micro four thirds mount. So it fits really well with the Blackmagic or the GH5. I do wanna mention that I was not sent this lens from anyone. I purchased it with my own money, my own excitement, because I'm super pumped to start using it. So without further ado, let's start breaking down this lens and we're gonna break it down as always by image quality, build quality, and my overall thoughts slash who I think it'd be useful for. So let's start with image quality. I can't relate to you how excited I am about the image that this lens produces, but there are a few things that make me really excited about this lens. One is the fact that it is a super wide lens with very little distortion. But on top of that, Having a wide shot in and of itself is fine, but a lot of times with a wide angle shot, you don't get any isolation because basically everything's in focus. But with this lens, there are some really awesome features that help you get a good isolating shot for your subject. One is the T2.1. Now having the T2.1 in and of itself is pretty awesome because you do have a chance at some shallow depth of field. And on top of that, you may get some low light performance. But what helps you get more shallow depth of field is the fact that the close focusing distance on this lens is also really amazing. So between the close focusing distance and the T2.1, you're able to get some shallow depth of field, which is not always the case with wide angle shots. So the image alone is something that really excites me about this lens. The fact that you can get this unique shot, this really amazing sharp cinematic shot with an ultra wide angle lens. The image is freaking amazing. Quote me on that freaking amazing. The other thing that excites me about this lens is some of the physical features that it has, which leads us into build quality. The build quality on this lens is pretty amazing, but the physical features are what get me more excited about the build of this lens. This is a fairly flat front element, so I can use screw-on ND filters for this lens. If you're familiar with a lot of wide angle lenses, ND filters sometimes are not an option, but this has a flat enough front element that you can use a screw-on ND filter. It is also a 49 millimeter filter thread size, which is fairly common. So the fact that you have an ultra wide angle lens that you can use a screw-on ND filter with, in and of itself, worth the money. Your focusing ring and your aperture ring are very smooth. Something else to note is how tiny this is. Like this is super, super tiny. Now this is not necessarily the build quality of the lens itself, but when you order this lens, you do get a Pelican case for this lens. I literally have never had a lens come in a Pelican case, so that was really cool. And on top of that, I got a tote bag. Allow a tote bag. I don't know if everyone will get that, but it was a nice touch. I don't know who I'm gonna carry in this because I'm not a tote bag type of person, but I might be. I got a free tote bag. It's pretty dope. I like it. So between the image quality, the build quality, what are my overall thoughts and who would I recommend this lens for? Now, if it wasn't clear from everything that I've said, I'm really excited to have this lens. I'm really excited about some of these stylized shots I can get with this lens. I like using wide angle shots for things you probably shouldn't use wide angle shots for. Maybe like weird portrait type shots or just something that is different. And so I really like having that unique look and the fact that this has the ability to have some shallow depth of field, create a little bit more of a cinematic filmic feel, just is the extra icing on the cake that makes this lens so exciting. So who would I recommend this for? I would absolutely recommend it for anybody that's doing real estate videography, maybe you're doing architectural videography or filmmaking. I also think that anybody that just wants an interesting wide angle shot, a unique wide angle shot, should pick up this lens. Now this lens, I will say, is not inexpensive. I spent about $600 on this lens. And for a micro four thirds prime, that can be a lot of money. But for what it is and how unique it is, I 
think it's well worth the cost. So I definitely recommend buying this lens. And if you are a real estate videographer or you just want some really interesting artistic shots, definitely consider picking up the Lawa 7.5 T 2.1. So that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're digging the overall content from the channel, consider subscribing. As always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Support each other. Wash those hands. And I'll see you here next time. Peace. Shh. See if she answers. Do you want me to be speaking too loud? How am I possibly being too loud? You're coming into my audio so hard. You're just like. Just parenting, quarantine parenting. Come on.